Here we go. All right. Hello, Venable Palma. Always so lovely to see you. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. There's Barbara, Mary Ellen, and Carl, Anthony, and Sheila. Okay. All right. Except, except um, Mary Camille, I'm going to put everyone on gallery. Is all right? Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. So let's just get settled into our meditation posture before we do our purification practice. Okay. So just try and let's bring our mind and our body in the same place. So check your sitting position, your legs. If your legs are on the ground, like if your feet are on the ground, make sure they're in a parallel position. Otherwise, a nice, comfortable cross-legged position. And uh, your coccyx slightly raised. So your hips aren't sort of slumping backwards. So your sacrum is straight. Shoulders and hips aligned. And then just imagine there's someone above the crown of your head, very gently lengthening your spine. And you can imagine your spine is made of this, um, these pearls of light, string of pearls of light. So you can imagine length and length and length. And just imagine there's some air going in between your vertebrae and your discs. So it's a sense of expansion. You'll notice as you do this, you might start to relax some muscles here and there. So your head slightly tip forward. You know, if your head is tipped backwards, if your chin is too far up, it tends to create agitation in the mind. And if you're too far forward, you have a tendency to fall asleep. So just have it a nice neutral position, but a little bit down. A little bit forward, eyes down, looking at a spot on the floor, whether your eyes are open or slightly, slightly open or closed. Tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Uh, let's just go to the crown of the head and relax the scalp. Let's just notice what happens to our face as we do that. All the muscles start to relax. Your eyebrows relax and your eyes, nose, cheeks. Just relax your ears and your jaw. Relax your mouth and chin. And relax the muscles on the back of the head, the scalp. Just relax your neck and your shoulders. Come to the front of the body. See if you can relax your throat and chest and arms, hands, fingers. Relax your bellies. And so many of our, you know, efforts to become healthy, we hold our stomach in, whether we're doing yoga or dance or just walking or gym exercises, we tend to be pulling up and holding in. In this case, we're allowed to sort of let go. And then just check that you haven't slumped. So keep the spine nice and straight, sort of a relaxed, alert place. You'll notice that this, just this very simple exercise of running through the body just in itself helps to Focus the mind, and bring you in the here and now. And just make sure your legs and feet are kind of relaxed, your toes. So let's bring our mind to the breath. Just notice the sensation of the cooler air as you're breathing in. And the sensation of air across the nostrils. And then as you breathe out, the air is slightly warmer. And just bring your mind to the breath. We're just breathing in and breathing out. And we think motivation, reason, 
for doing this practice this evening. So we're trying to purify all our negative karma so we can develop our wisdom and our compassion so we can be a benefit to others. Okay, so now here we just remind ourselves again that there's nothing that we've done that cannot be purified. And we are inherently pure. We just have a ton of obscurations there, delusions. So we're trying to get slowly, slowly wade our way through these, just get rid of them. And this takes merit and purification practices. So we just think we're going to purify by applying the four opponent powers. The first of these is the power of regret. So we sincerely regret from the depths of our heart anything you have done to harm any living being on this day in this life and perhaps in any past lives. So maybe a particular incident comes to mind, could be something you've said, maybe even something you've thought, some gesture you made. Did you say something that caused trouble for another person? Did you accidentally take a pen home from the post office? So again, just remind ourselves that the reason we regret is based on this logic of karma. Given that we experience everything due to our past actions, having harmed others, we will necessarily experience suffering in the future. So we don't really want that. We have enough to deal with, with uh, the problems we have from day to day, the obstacles that arise, health obstacles, things that happen at work, things that happen in our lives, in our relationships. So we don't want these kinds of seeds to be continually ripening. It's just kind of distracting, disturbing, creates suffering. So we need our lives to be kind of be clear so we can continue to practice unencumbered so we want to remove these karmic seeds before they ripen into suffering so we think like this I regret from the depths of my heart having harmed others with my body and my speech and we think here of our broken vows so if you have um, pratamoksha vows or bodhisattva or tantric vows and uh, none vows. So we just regret from the depths of our heart if we've somehow not been able to follow all the vows or we've somehow just let them degenerate a little bit. And then think, what can I do about this negative karma I've created? Who can I turn to? So here we go, the second opponent power, which is the power of reliance. So this is kind of refuge. So we rely upon, we turn to this Buddha Vajrasattva. We see Buddha Vajrasattva as a doctor who has the methods that we can use to purify. So we're not asking him to forgive us. We just want to purify ourselves using his methods. So visualize Guru Vajrasattva above the crown of your head. So you can just imagine he's about two inches above the crown of the head. And this image is this blissful, radiant being above the crown of our head. So brilliant, light, translucent, dynamic. So you can imagine this is the mind of your guru, your teacher, your trusted mentor, manifesting in this aspect for your benefit. 
So you imagine this made of this again, this radiant light. So sitting in a cross-legged position on a lotus. His face is this beautiful radiant with his long lotus-like eyes full of love and compassion for us. And at the same time, he's looking at you, he's looking at, or imagine he's looking at all sentient beings. And he just has absolutely no judgment, just complete acceptance of who you are, understands everything you've done, doesn't have any judgment at all. Just full of love for you, wanting to help you. So he has this beautiful sweet red mouth. His hair is black and held up in a top knot. His arms are crossed at his heart, left underneath the right. The left is holding a bell, which represents wisdom. The right is holding a vajra, which represents the indestructibility of compassion. And there being crossed represents the union of these two. This symbolizes enlightenment. To the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, I go for refuge until I am enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I reach Buddhahood so as to benefit all sentient beings. So in the second part of uh, this one, we contemplate co this idea of compassion. So in order to develop compassion, we need to rely upon other beings. So in this case is the very beings that we have harmed and those who have harmed us. So think in particular of somebody you may have harmed recently, a sentient being, doesn't necessarily have to be human, and someone in the past, and then maybe in general, all beings that we've ever harmed, mm -hmm. some that we don't even have any memory of. Sometimes we don't even know we've done it. We may have just had some aversion in our mind and said something and not thought anything of it, but it landed in a difficult way in somebody's heart. So remember, those who have harmed you, this is a little bit more difficult, try to have compassion for them because they will suffer as a result of the harm that they've done to you. So you think, we're going to do this practice for the sake of all the sentient beings and I must purify for their sake. So we come to the third opponent power, the power of the remedy. So this is the actual medicine, the doing of the actual practice of uh, purification. So we, the first one is a purification of the body. So imagine to visualize a Guru Vajrasattva very compassionately sending this powerful white nectar from his heart, arcs around and enters your crown and pours into your entire body, body, filling you completely. It keeps coming and it forces out of your lower orifices all the harm you've ever done to any living being with your body in this form of this ink, inky liquid. And you just imagine that it sort of disappears into space, it doesn't harm you, doesn't pollute, just disappears. So we just imagine this kind of nectar coming and coming and it's purifying any harm we've done to any living being with our body. So that includes anything we've done to steal, anything we've taken without thinking about it. Rinpoche calls it taking the ungiven, uh, taking the ungiven, that's the definition of stealing. Any kind of sexual misconduct anything we've done to harm with our body. Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Petita Dida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mimpi Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuruham Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pei 
Um Vajrasapa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapa Dina Padita Dita Mebowa Sutokaya Mebowa Supokaya Mebowa Anarakta Mebowa Sawa Siddhi Mimpiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Siddham Shriyam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Um Vajrasapa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapa Dina Padita Dida mebowa, sutokaya mebowa, supokaya mebowa, anarakta mebowa, sawa siddhi mimpi yata sawa kama sutta me, sitam shriyam karuhum ha 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 ho bhagawan, sawa tata gata vajramame mutta vajrabhava mahasa maya sattva ahum pe. So be delighted that all the harm you've ever done to any sentient being with your body is now completely purified. And think that there's nothing that you could ever do but to be a benefit to others with your body. How amazing would that be? So next is the purification of speech. Imagine Guru Vajrasattva very happily sending this powerful nectar from his heart chakra. Again, it arcs around, enters the crown of your head, filling your entire body, but this time forcing up to the top half of your body all the negativities of your speech. So it kind of flows out of the top half of part of your body and disappears into space, not one atom left. So as Lama Yeshi says, just like uh, when you fill up a, a glass in the sink, dirty glass in the sink, all the kind of muck comes to the top. So just like that. So imagine all the gossip and the harsh speech, harsh speech and useless speech and lying and talking about other people behind their backs. All is purified by this powerful nectar filling you Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Patita Dida Mebowa Sutokaya Mebowa Supokaya Mebowa Anarakta Mebowa Sawa Siddhi Mimpi Yata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Guru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramame Mutta Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Patita Dida mebowa, sutokaya mebowa, supokaya mebowa, anarakta mebowa, sawa siddhi mimpi yata sawa kama sutta me, sitam shriyam karuhum ha 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 ho bhagawan, sawa tata gata vajramame mutta vajrabhava maha samaya sattva ahum pe. Om vajrasapa samaya manupalaya vajrasapa dina patita, dida mebowa, sutokaya mebowa, supokaya mebowa, Anarakta mebowa, sawa siddhi mimpi yata sawa kama sutta me, sitam shriyam kuru hum ha 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 ho bhagawan, sawa tata gata vajramame mutta vajrabhava maha samaya sattva ahum pe. So imagine, feel so happy that your speech is now completely purified and imagine that it's not possible to do anything but benefit others with your speech. So just imagine this kind of wish in your mind that every time somebody hears your voice it's a benefit to them so amazing so the next is a purification of the mind so guru vajrasattva now very compassionately sending powerful beams of laser light from his heart chakra again this is arcing around and entering your crown chakra and it fills your entire being. So just imagine that the moment this light hits your heart chakra, all the delusions of the mind completely disappear. Just as Lami she says, when you walk into a room and switch on a light, immediately that light dispels the darkness. So this is the same way. The darkness of your mind is dispelled. So imagine all the attachment and neediness, the anger, and depression, anxiety, resentment, and jealousy, bitterness, all these negative emotions instantly dispelled, not one atom left. Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Patita Dida Mebowa Sutokaya Mebowa Supokaya Mebowa Anarakta mebowa, sawa siddhi mimpi yata sawa kama sutta me, sitam shriyam kuru hum ha 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 ho bhagawan, sawa tata gata vajramame mutta vajrabhava maha samaya sattva ahum pe. 
Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sapa Dina Patita Yuda Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mimpiyatsa Sawa Kama Sita Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sapa Dina Patita Dida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasiri Mimpiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Guru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe So now just be delighted that all of your delusions which are the source of our own suffering and the cause of why we harm others with our body and our speech are totally purified and gone and finished. And think there's no space in your heart now for anything other than love and kindness and forgiveness and wisdom and bliss and compassion. So just think here, rather than having our body and speech being the servants of our delusions, why not think about our body and speech being the servants of our virtues? Servants of our virtuous mind. So next is just the purification of even the subtle imprints of negativity of body, speech and mind. So once more, imagine Guru Vajrasattva sending light and nectar and filling you completely and this eradicates even the subtlest, smallest, tiniest imprint of negative energy from your mind. So it's kind of like once you've taken the garlic out of a jar, you then need to remove the smell. So the visualization for this, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago, Venerable Rabina mentioned you can do the visualizations for the body, the speech and the mind just separately, one after the other. For, for each time we recite the mantra or you can do it simultaneously if it's possible to do that or just imagine light and nectar whatever works om vajra sapa samaya manu palaya vajra sapa dino patita dido mebowa sutokaya mebowa supokaya mebowa anarakta mebowa sawasiri mimpiyata sawa kama sutta me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sapa Dino Patita Dira Mebowa Sutokaya Mebowa Supokaya Mebowa Anarakta Mebowa Sawa Siri Mimpiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sapa Dina Patita Dira Mebowa Sutokaya Mebowa Supokaya Mebowa Anarakta Mebowa Sawa Siri Mimpiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Now feel, we feel completely purified. Not one atom of negativity left in our mind streams. Even the subtlest obscurations to omniscience have been removed. So just feel really delighted about that. Incredible. Next is the power of resolve. This is the fourth of the four opponent powers. This is a really crucial one. This is the determination not to harm with our body, speech and mind again. So without this determination, we're going to keep following the same old habits, the same old patterns. So this kind of determination not to harm again is a, a kind of a beacon that guides us. As Lama Zoparimbashe says, everything exists on the tip of the wish. So maybe think about something that you'd like to work on today and tomorrow, or maybe for the next week, or the next month, or the next year. But give ourselves a, a reasonable timeline. If it's not going to be possible for you to do a certain thing, think a certain thought for more than five minutes, 
make it five minutes. So try, we try not to lie to ourselves about what we think we might be able to do, like a New Year's Eve promise or something. We just have it be doable. And then generally kind of make a vow to avoid engaging in these other actions that we have a habit to do. And sort of if we stop our habits, if we gradually decrease our habits, eventually these patterns will start to atrophy. We can have new positive patterns and habits forming instead. So this determination to try not to do something again is what gives us the strength to change. So now to conclude, Guru Vajrasattva is delighted with us. So wanting to merge with your mind, he melts into white light and absorbs into you through your crown and thinking, my Guru's body, speech and mind, Vajrasattva's body, speech and mind, and my own body, speech and mind are the same thing. Lama Yeshi calls this union oneness. So next, as Lama Yeshi, Lama Pramisha recommends to meditate on the emptiness with three circles. In emptiness, there is no I, the creator of negative karma. There is no action of creating negative karma. There is no negative karma created. So just place your mind in this emptiness for a, while, a moment. Try and Think of this idea of all phenomena as being empty, of not existing from its own side, not being this kind of solid, permanent thing. We see things as permanent. We don't like change. Another thing to think of is things don't exist in the way we think they do. Things exist in our mind according to the way our brain is structured. It's how we are able to view the world. So we had the mind of a dog, the brain of a dog. We would see things differently, smell things differently. We have 60 olfactory receptors in our nose. Dogs have 300. So their experience of the world is different to ours. Like something like that. So finally, four measurable thoughts. Equanimity, how wonderful it would be if all, all sentient beings were to abide in equanimity, free from the closeness of attachment and the distance of hatred, May they abide in equanimity. I myself will cause them to abide in equanimity. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Immeasurable loving kindness. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were to achieve Buddhahood. May they achieve Buddhahood. I myself will cause them to achieve Buddhahood. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Immeasurable compassion. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be free from suffering and its causes. I myself will cause them to be free from suffering and its causes. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. And the measurable joyfulness. How wonderful it will be if all sentient beings were never separated from the happiness of higher rebirth and liberation. May they never be separated from these. I myself will cause them never to be separated from these. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. And dedication prayers. And we'll just do one verse of these. As a result of the three times merits of myself and others, may bodhicitta, from which the happiness of all sentient beings comes, be generated in the minds of self and other sentient beings without delay, even for one second. And that which has been generated may it increase. And then let's go to His Holiness's long life prayer. The wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world. To the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso, I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. And then for Lamza Pramishay, you who uphold the subdues moral way, who serves as the bountiful bearer of all, 
sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjana's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplishes magnificent prayers, honoring the three jewels, savor of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. And then for Lama Uso, Venerable One, to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors, for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West, mindful of your loving concern for us and intentionally descending again into the family of the far distant land, we make this request, O Lama, please, please live long. Gosh, it goes so fast. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. It's always so lovely.